Are you going to eat your pie? I haven't. You've had two pieces of pie. Incidentally, when are you going to pay me for your board and room? I gave it to him. What did you give it to him for? Well, he said he was boss, and I didn't know it. Oh, he did, huh? Don't get sore, honey. I was only kidding. And from now on, you pay me for your board. Well, we've got to be running along. Come on, Stanley. Goodbye, honey. No. Goodbye. Where do you think you're going? Well, we're going to the ball game. You're going to the ball game? Well, certainly. We businessmen have to relax sometime, don't we, Stanley? We certainly do. Well, if we you want to relax, you can stay home and wash these dishes. What do you mean, wash the dishes? Yeah, what would his friends think? You keep out of it. You'll stay home. Come on, the dishes. Well, I'll be seeing you. Oh, no, you don't. If I've got to stay here and wash the dishes, he's going to dry them. I don't care who does what. But you're not leaving me here and washing all these dishes alone. I'm telling you that right now. You're well, after we get through, then can we go to the ball game? You can do what you like. Thank you, honey. Uh, Mrs. Hardy. If... Get me the dish pan. Over there. Get out of the way. Pull out that boy.
Don't keep handing them to me. When you get it dry, put it in a nice dry place. Now we are getting someplace. You open the cupboard. I'll put those away. Mr. Hardy home? Uh, yes, sir, but he's not in. What's the matter with you? Too lazy to answer the door? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Finley. Good afternoon. I'm here to collect the payment on the furniture. Why, it was paid yesterday. Steady, woman. Not to me, it wasn't. Oliver? Oliver? Yes, Vivian. There must be some mistake. Oliver, did I or did I not give you the money to pay on the furniture? You certainly did. Then why wasn't it paid? Well, I gave it to him to pay it for me. Then what did you do with it? I gave it back to him. You gave it to me? Yeah, I gave it to you to pay my room and board. Then you gave it to her. Recommend it? Do you mean to say that the money that he gave to you, that you gave to him, that he gave to me, was the same money that I gave to him to pay him? Well, if that was the money that you gave to him to give to me to pay to him, it must have been the money that I gave him to give to you to pay my rent, didn't I? Mr. Finlayson, I owe you an apology. And $37. Then this money must belong to you. And the next time, I want my payment without any detour. <laughs> he gave it to you, and you gave it to him, and who gave it to what? Why, you're all nuts! You big dumbbell, I can't trust you to do a thing. And as for you, I have a good mind to throw you out. You can't do it. I can't do it? No, because I paid my room and board in advance, and I gave it to him. What do you mean, you gave it to me? That was the money that she gave to me, and I gave it to you to give to him. Then you gave it back to me, and I had to give it to her to give to him. Was that the money that she gave to him that I gave to you to give Why, to Why, certainly. Well, if she wants to give it to him, that's her business. No use you and I arguing about oh, it. Oh, cut it out, cut it out. What humiliation. Predators hounding me at my very fireside. You know what? What? I've got an idea. Well, let's hear it. How much money have you and your wife got in the bank? Well, if it's any of your business, we have a joint account of $300. Why? Why don't you draw the money out of the bank, pay off the furniture, and own it outright? You wouldn't have any interest to pay? And, and you wouldn't have any hounds in your fireplace. That's a good idea. I'm glad you like it. Oh, honey! What is it? Stanley's got a great idea. What now? Well, he said that we should draw our money out of the bank and pay the furniture off. We'll do nothing of the kind. That money stays right where it is. Listen, Tumbleweed. From now on, you mind your own business. <laughs> Draw the money out of the bank, the very idea. I've come to the conclusion you haven't an ounce of brains. Are you going to let her talk to you like that? Mm, I certainly am not. I don't blame you. Why, she talks to you like water off a duck's back. If she was my wife, I'd draw her out of the bank and I'd go and buy some furniture. Stanley? You're absolutely right. I like her. Come on.
Do you know where the bank is? Why, certainly. Three hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. It sure is. Why, ladies and gentlemen, this beautiful antique grandfather's clock is worth twenty-five hundred dollars of anybody's money, and you're asking me to give it away for a hundred and fifty dollars? One fifty-five! One fifty-five! Thank you, Toyo. Never regret that day. One fifty-five! One fifty-five for the beautiful old antique. At last we get something for nothing. One sixty! One hundred and sixty dollars! Do I hear any more? One hundred and sixty dollars for this beautiful antique clock? Oh, gentlemen! Step right up forward. We're giving things away today. Come, come. There's plenty of seats right down front here. Two hundred dollars. Oh, don't let me sell this beautiful clock for two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. One. Two hundred and five. Two hundred and five. Two hundred and five. Two hundred and ten. Two ten. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Two twenty-five. Two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and thirty dollars. Two hundred and thirty dollars. Oh, what? Just a minute. That's all right, lady. Take your time. Please, sir, will you do me a favor? My heart is set on having that clock, and I find I've left my money at home. Will you keep the bidding open until I go home and get it? Don't let anyone have it under any consideration. And I'll pay you well for your trouble. My dear madam, being a true southerner, chivalry is my middle name to say nothing of the hospitality. $230, I'm bid, do I hear any more? $230, $230. $235. $235. I'll be back in a minute. $235, what? $235, what? Third and last call, two hundred and forty dollars. Two hundred and forty dollars. Two hundred and forty. Do I hear any more? Two hundred and forty dollars. Two hundred and forty-five. Two hundred and forty-five. Two hundred and fifty. Two hundred and fifty. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty-five. Two hundred and fifty-five. Two hundred and sixty. Two hundred and sixty. Two hundred and sixty-five. Two hundred and sixty-five. Two hundred and seventy. Two hundred and seventy. Two hundred and. What are you bidding against me for? Well, you're bidding against me. Two seventy-five. Two hundred and eighty. Two hundred and eighty-five. Two hundred and ninety. Two hundred and ninety. Two hundred and ninety. Sold to the jolly gentleman on my left for two hundred and ninety dollars. Thank you. <sighs> well, folks, that concludes the sale for today. Hey, you! Come and pay your money and take your clock out of here. I want to get home. Uh, pardon me just a moment, sir. I beg your pardon, sir, but you don't understand. You see, I wasn't bidding for myself. I was bidding for a lady, and she went home to get her money. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes. Well, you did the bidding, and you'll do the paying. Oh, boss? Yes? What is it? This fellow bought a clock and won't pay for it. Oh, is that so? Well, we've got a whip. Oh! I'll handle this. I've had trouble with these birds before. Now, you pay this money what you bid, or I'll call the cops. Then you I... take that clock and get out of here? You gave it to him, and he gave it to me, and I gave... Get out! Go! He gave it to him, and... Get out! Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Hardy. I wonder if you'd do a favor for me. You know, I have a joint account with my husband, and I'd like you to fix it so that nobody else can draw the money out but me. I'd be glad to do it for you, Mrs. Hardy, That's but your husband was here a short while ago. That's very nice, thank you. What? Did he take the money? Yes, ma'am, all of it. He closed the account. Hey, Ollie. What? Let's put it down a minute. Oh, Mr. Finlayson. Yes? Have you seen my husband? He was here a while ago. Oh, thank goodness for that. Did he pay you for the furniture? He did not. Then what was he doing here? He bought himself a grandfather's clock. A clock? What for? For $290. That's what for. <laughs>
Well, here's another nice kettle of fish you pickled me in. What are you going to tell her about the clock? I'm going to tell her nothing. I'll keep everything in the dark. And if you'll keep your mouth shut, nobody will be any the wiser. Hello, honey. Well, what's the matter? Where's that clock? What clock? The clock you paid $290 for. <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous. Where would I get $290? Where's that clock? I don't know. He said he was going to keep it in the dark. And if I didn't keep my mouth shut, then nobody would be any the wiser. Now, why didn't you keep your trap shut? Give me that chair. What are you going to do, cook something? Yes, I'm going to cook his boots. Taking my money out of the bank, I'll give him the clock. How's Mr. Hardy? Well, I believe he's convalescing. All right, I'll wait till he gets through. I'll sit over here now. Miss Goodall, get Mr. Laurel on the phone. Having him down here at once. Why, Doctor, that's Mr. Laurel there. Oh, good. We need you. Right this way. Mr. Laurel, I regret to inform you that Mr. Hardy's had a relapse. And I find it necessary to give him a blood transfusion. Huh. Now, Mr. Hardy has suggested that you, being his best friend, would be pleased to let us take the blood from you. How do you mean? Oh, it's simple. We take some of your blood, and transfer it to Mr. Hardy to give him strength and make him well. Who do you think I am, a blood worm? Nurse? Yes, sir. Take Mr. Laurel upstairs. Prepare him for the operation. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, wait a right minute. Wait this Listen. way, Mr. Laurel. Do I have to take me a head off? Oh, Mr. Ready, nurse? Ready, doctor. Open the valve. Oh, doctor, look. Close the valve quickly. Oh, it won't work, Doctor. It must work. Try it again. Oh. No. Oh. 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 Get the doctor. Oh, Doctor. That Laurel and Hardy case. What's the matter? Mr. Laurel has passed out, sir. I'm afraid we've taken too much of his blood. Well, reverse the operation. Take some blood from Mr. Hardy and give it to Mr. Laurel. But that'll get them all mixed up, sir. What difference does it make? Do as I tell you. Yes, sir. Come to me for everything. Come on. Well, here's another nice mess you've got me into. Hmm. Shut up and come on. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Hardy. Goodbye. And goodbye, Mr. Laurel. <laughs> goodbye, my dear madam.
wait a minute. I forgot something. 